Government Bodies Regulation 2014 allows filming and recording by anyone attending a meeting. This is not within the Council's control. Rushcliffe Borough Council is committed to being open and transparent in its decision making. As such, the Council will undertake audio recording of meetings which are open to the public except where it is resolved that the public be excluded, as the information being discussed is confidential or otherwise exempt. In order to enable the recording, please use the microphones at all times when speaking, and tonight's meeting is being recorded for training purposes only. Thank you. Apologies for absence, please. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. We've received apologies from... Uh, Councillor Mrs Jeffries, uh, Councillor Brown, Councillor Bushman, Councillor Cotty, Councillor Dickinson, Councillor Donoghue, Councillor Lawrence and Councillor Mrs Mayles. Thank you. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Uh, Madam Mayor, just to uh, note, it's not technically a declaration of interest, but on item nine, uh, we will request that Mr Crowell and uh, Ms Salt will leave the chamber for the purposes of debate of that, that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Item three is to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting of the Council held on the 26th of July 2018. Councillor Robinson. I'd like to move the minutes. Thank you. Do you second them? I'd like to second them. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Jones, I was coming to you next. Oh, yeah. Would you like to speak about your amendment? Uh, yes, thanks. The, the amendment's been put round. <clears throat> it really relates to the first paragraph about what I said about parking in West Bridgeford <clears throat> because the, the draft minute in front of us contained at least three factual inaccuracies. Um, and that's why that has been put round right. uh, for approval. I, ho I hope members will, will accept that. I can explain the factual errors, but it's unusual for, in summaries for them to get it so wrong. That I've gathered that it has been checked against the recording and it is now factual. Thank you. And it has been printed in the minute book. Thank you. All those in favour? Anyone against? Thank you. That's carried. I would like to welcome a new councillor. Councillor <laughs> is there. Rex Walker, congratulations on the uh, by-election victory and I hope you will enjoy um, your time here before the next election. <laughs> anyway, a warm welcome to you. Over the past few weeks, it's been delightful to visit fairs and produce shows in West Bridgeford, Austin, Sutton Bonington and Normanton on Soar. The weather has encouraged people to support these events, but it has been a difficult year for the gardeners. Indeed, the lovely weather we have had has been a bonus for the annual events held like Lark in the Park, Proms in the Park, Sunday Fun Day, etc., which our officers and staff have organised so well. The crowds for the tour of Britain's cycle race were fantastic and our Rushcliffe res residents entered into the spirit of that with great enthusiasm. Finally, I can't mention all my visits, but the Hickling Scarecrow competition was very enjoyable and so interesting to see the varied interpretations of the theme, which was space. One entrant was an interpretation of a black hole. And E.T. and Star Wars were extremely popular. Thank you. A lot of fun. Thank you. Item five is the leader's announcements, please. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd also like to extend my uh, welcome to uh, Councillor Walker uh, on the right side of the chamber. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I'd, uh, I'd just like to pay tribute uh, to this borough, um, particularly to the Council, for the very, very successful hosting of the, uh, the cycle race, the, uh, the Tour of Britain. Uh, it was a real success, and uh, 
particularly what was, was excellent, was that it wasn't just about West Bridgeford, it was very much about all the villages and the towns out there that it actually uh, it followed and the amount of work beforehand. And I think it really portrayed the borough in a very, very fine light. And if I may, uh, Madam Mayor, just quote a, um, a letter we received from a gentleman who's actually had 25 years on the European cycling circuit. And I quote, I can say without fear of criticism, the stage start in West Bridgeford was by far the best ever he'd ever experienced. So that's an incredible testament, I think, to uh, partnership with the County Council and obviously with Rushcliffe uh, and the huge amount of work that uh, went on there. I have actually been asked to say there's actually absolutely no truth in the rumour that uh, ITV or the uh, British Cycling um, asked me not to allow Councillor Edervin and Councillor Moore to wear Lycra at the start. <laughs> and that is just not true. Madam Mayor, um, this borough does pride itself on partnerships. And I'm delighted if I could just share with you some very, very important partnerships over the last week. For those of you who know members were there at the Parish Council Forum, where it was a record number, the most ever attended. And we covered everything from uh, housing, trees, plastics, uh, we also covered um, things like uh, the uh, well, so things like the local plan, obviously as well. But those sort of agendas and the partnership theme at all was incredibly successful. And again, uh, it is something that uh, we, we should be very proud of. On Tuesday this week, uh, uh, Councillor Edwin and myself hosted the Big Business Partnership, where we brought the big businesses into into Rushcliffe, so people like the power station, the airport, uh, British Gypsum to talk about partnership and how we actually work with business. And again, very well attended, great support by, uh, by the businesses themselves, and we have some very, very good outcomes. And tomorrow, in this very room, again, Councillor Edivine and myself are hosting a, uh, a, um, a media, a digital uh, event. We have over 70 companies coming in tomorrow, talking about partnership, talking about how we actually work forward, um, how we actually uh, use social media, etc. And again, Rushcliffe is leading that with uh, D2N2. So I think these are very, very important partnerships as we actually uh, go forward. That's something that we can uh, be very proud of. Lastly, Madam Mayor, some of you may have heard uh, today a, uh, a survey produced by the Office of National Statistics, and it's called the Satisfaction Survey right across England. And I'm absolutely delighted that Rushcliffe once again, was the most satisfied resident anywhere in the county and above the national average as well. We had a, a rating of 7.58 out of 10. The uh, national average is 7.52. And in fact, the lowest was Broxtow at 7.11. Thank you, Magna. Thank you. Chief Executive's announcements, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just two, two announcements. Um, Madam Mayor, yesterday I received some information from Nottingham Trent University, which is all compiled in this sheet. I will be uh, I'm making arrangements that this will be circulated electronic for all members so that they can get information. What's interesting about the information, you may wonder uh, what outcomes Nottingham Trent University engagement they have with their community. And it contains information such that there are 790 students originating from Rushcliffe, which is about 8% of their intake. Of those, 30% which equates to 237 are from families on incomes less than 15,000. Um, and in their work as a university, they have placed 282 students in organisations to get work experience uh, throughout the Rushcliffe area, including at this council. And then 73 graduates gained employment within the Rushcliffe area. So, as I say, I thought that was interesting information that members would wish to have, and we will arrange to make circulation for that. The second announcement, Madam Mayor, is um, uh, following the last council meeting, um, is I've, I've requested and we have uh, procured and made sure that we've got our available, able to take the enhancements of the microphone systems that we have to start looking at doing recorded voting so that we're able to show in real time how I'm voting on motions, which would give, I'm gonna, this is automation beginning to come um, and makes chief executives redundant and having to count your hands. So um, 
Uh, and the reason I mentioned that tonight is because we will wish to do some trialling of that and to uh, help members understand what it is about and how it works, but most importantly so we can test it re robustly to ensure that it works when we get into a real-life situation. So I just thought you would find that interesting and uh, hopefully we can uh, all enjoy your cooperation on that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Item 7 is a citizen's question, the first one that we've had, and um, I can't see Mr Harvey in the audience, so I believe it falls to me to read it. The Cabinet's approval of the creation of an LLP between RBC Enterprises Limited and PSP Facilities Limited will influence decisions relating to the future of council purchased and other land, local infrastructure and the economy across the borough. Taking into account that the LLP will effectively be a commercial enterprise and not subject to all of the transparency required for local governments, government, government, governance, will the council give a public assurance that any considerations of the LLP that affect or apply to parts of the borough will be subject to notification and consultation to the local established town parish meeting bodies. Or where such a body does not currently exist, direct consultation with the public or some other body for this purpose. This is the end of the question. Uh, Councillor Eddie Veen, I believe that falls to you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I can say that any projects undertaken by the LLP will be subject to sign off by Cabinet. The Council can give public assurance that it will continue to make decisions in line with the Council's constitution, which includes consultation with relevant bodies as appropriate. Thank you very much. Item 8 is the Scrutiny Annual Report for 2017-18. Councillor Robinson. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to propose this, uh, this motion. I'd first of all like to thank all the chairman and all the members of the scrutiny committee for 2017-18 for their excellent work. And uh, I will be asking for the chairman to stand up and give a, a short uh, oral report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Comblack. Huh? Yeah, I'll oh, sorry, second up. Yes. I'd like to second the motion. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Councillor Cumberland, first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We had a very productive year, as will have been seen from the report. My thanks must go to the members of the group and my Vice Chairman, John Furman, for, the contribution, for their contributions and to officers for the comprehensive reports delivered. Highlights for all members will, I am sure, have been the initiative to re-green Rushcliffe and plastics. Our scrutiny of tree provision and preservation in the borough has led to an initiative to plant trees across Rushcliffe and offer free trees to parishes and private residents, something I hope all members are promoting within their wards. A £50,000 budget allocation was made for the project to be carried over three years. Single-use plastics was a serious item and is also exercising the minds of senior government ministers. As a result of scrutiny, the use of single-use plastics and helium balloons on Rushcliffe premises and at events has been greatly reduced. In addition, the refill Rushcliffe scheme has just been launched to encourage the use of refillable water containers, thus further reducing single-use plastic water bottles. Over the summer, I took a group of councillors and officers to the Mansfield Recycling Facility, where it came as no surprise that the facility has not been upgraded to handle the multiple plastic polymers and multi-sized containers now produced, but not allowed for recycling in Rushcliffe. This is not a Rushcliffe facility, but it is hoped that further scrutiny by the County Council and Joint Council partnership working can help make this facility better serve the residents of Rushcliffe and Nottinghamshire. Broadband, that old chestnut, exercises our minds on an annual basis, and until there is a maximum provision with minimum deprived spots, we'll continue to do so. The young group continued to thrive and following scrutiny, the programme is now to be delivered by the Trent Bridge Community Trust, ensuring we offer good work experience placements to our Rushcliffe young people. 
We have asked the Trust to report back to us the results and figures and placements and the job opportunities created in Rushcliffe. The results of our scrutiny of the off-street car parking strategy are now being felt in Westbridgewood and the larger villages. As you will have seen in the report, we have also pushed for a minimum requirement of two parking spaces on any new build planning applications, for which we await the outcomes. Getting into West Bridgeford and City is becoming more difficult as the County Council continue to reduce the rural bus services. We have pushed for a more proactive approach, as future housing development across the borough needs to be taken into account. Also, the destinations and bus journeys and why people are travelling. It was a very busy year, and I hope you agree, very productive. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Corporate Governance Group, Councillor Beardsall. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, begin by thanking the officers and members of Corporate Governance, and indeed my Vice Chair, George Davidson, and indeed um, my stand-in Vice Chair, Councillor McInnes, who stood in at last moment on a couple of occasions. The scrutiny process for corporate governance is a vital process that challenges the influence of how the council makes decisions to ensure a high level of service. The report demonstrates the variety of areas which corporate governance group have scrutinised over the past year and the actions taken to ensure the probity and soundness of the Council's decision-making. The group over the past year have judiciously and robustly scrutinised the Council's finances and approach to risk, as well as, as well as other corporate issues, including associated financial implications, such as the Council's pension liability. We also set a working group, as many of you will know, on the Council's constitution. And via this process, we have made significant impact in developing the proposals for the introduction of public speaking at Cabinet and Council meetings. Looking forward, Madam Mayor, we continue and will continue to scrutinise risk and finance. And we particularly look forward to the result of the Centre for Public Scrutiny's report and aim to work in any changes that are there proposed from that report. Uh, the report is more detailed on the pages 23 to 32. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. For Partnership Delivery Group, that's Councillor Mrs Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Um, like my colleagues, I would like to thank all our members, and in particular, Councillor Jean Greenwood, who was my vice chairman throughout the year. Uh, we usually start the year with a review of positive futures, and I must say it's very uplifting to do that because um, the enthusiasm of the team, led by Mark Clifford, is amazing. And this time, instead of doing a broad brush over troubled youngsters, um, who are usually referred by their schools, they've reduced the number that they deal with in the hopes of producing better outcomes. And they, all, they are also um, providing a counselling service for those with mental health issues. The work of the group has been extended to East Leak, sadly not to Ruddington, but I'm afraid finances don't allow at the moment. And they're working with 10 people there. They're also working with the Prince's Trust, and some young people can now get college credits. After that, we had a, um, a report and um, I can't think of the word. Um, what's the word? Analysis. Analysis. Yes, that will do. Um, of the fleet maintenance and garage services um, partnership with the city council, and that's been very productive. Um, they made savings of twenty-seven thousand two hundred eighty pounds in twenty sixteen <coughs> seventeen. And by refurbishing our vehicles and extending their lives, it's resulted in about £300,000 worth of savings for the borough. Um, they've had no um, refuse collection round has failed because a vehicle wasn't available. So that, that is also good news for our residents. The review of the Metropolitan Housing uh, Partnership 
They, they've produced 43 uh, new homes in 2016-17, and in the um, year 2017-18, to 18, they were scheduling to do 93 uh, more affordable homes. They've also introduced, because there was a lot of trouble over previous years, over the um, repair situation, there was a lot of unhappiness amongst um, tenants, and they set up their own in-house um, repair firm called Metworks, and that has achieved a 96% satisfaction rating from the customers. And it's also saved Metropolitan £380,000. Um, I think that's about that for that one. The um, RCAN and RCVS, they get very little money from, as an actual fact. They, but they get a, uh, produce a lot of um, benefits as well for the um, population. <laughs> But because of the small amount of uh, finance involved, it was decided to either, um, it's going to be reviewed, but I think it will probably come back um, every other year rather than annually. Um, the uh, business partnership continued to meet and they are uh, supporting local businesses. And it was noted that members of the Rushcliffe Business Partnership were being directed to a D2N2 scale-up programme which offered them financial support and coaching for businesses, which would help them step up to the next level. Craig, uh, Inspector Craig Berry also came as representing the South Nottinghamshire Community Safety Partnership. And uh, there's been yet another reorganisation um, of the police. And he was actually going to get from April of this year, he was going to be in charge of a team which would include a new burglary team. And as I think a lot of people feel that burglaries are something that are ignored now, that's quite encouraging. Um, I say thank you again to my vice chair, Jean Greenwood. She actually took that last meeting in March because I was out on the high seas. So thank you very much, Jean, you're there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Performance Management Board, Councillor G. Wheeler, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, the comprehensive report is in front of you tonight, so I don't intend to go through this. Instead, Madam Mayor, I shall reserve my comments to offer thanks to all BMB members who served in 2017-18 and also past members of this committee. I, of course, offer particular thanks to my Vice Chairman, Haley, Councillor Haley Chewing. Thanks also, Madam Mayor, in equal, in equal measures to all the officers. Madam Chairman, as I'm no longer on BMB, can I wish members the same measure of success enjoyed by BMB for 2018-19 and beyond? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor McInnes, did you wish to comment? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I just say thank you to Gordon as well for being a, a good chair of mm -hmm. BMB? Um, and I'd like to thank all the partners that come in as well, that we scrutinise, and for their work that they do um, with the council, which is always really reassuring that they come in, they answer questions very openly and honest, and all members get to put their point across, uh, which is a really good part of scrutiny. Uh, so the Labour group would like to endorse all of that, um, and we'd be very interested to see where scrutiny goes in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Councillor um, Malinder. <laughs> oh, Malinder, I get it wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, the Green Group are quite happy to endorse the report as well. Um, I don't know how many of the members in the room have taken the opportunity to uh, put in uh, their four penneth at the, the review of scrutiny that we've been having recently. I'm seeing a few nods, that's really good. We've done a good job in the past, I think. We've come across as a council that's worked well in terms of scrutiny. I think it'd be really interesting to see how we can take that forward and develop it for the future. I normally say some things about what we've been doing in the past at this point, but lots of others have already said that. I think it'd be interesting to see if we take scrutiny forward, do we do it in more depth on fewer to topics? Do we have fewer topics per meeting? Do we take it so that we have slightly more meetings? Do we rearrange how scrutiny is done in the future? I think that's going to be an interesting challenge and something we can look forward to in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else? Councillor Robinson, would you respond? Uh, I right, thank you. So we'll take the vote. All in favour, please show. That's unanimous, ma'am. Thank you. That's unanimous. It is carried. Item nine. Thank you. Arrangements for the role of monitoring officer. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think everything's fairly self explanatory actually in the uh, report itself, so I don't really think uh, there's an awful lot to add on this. Obviously, it's disappointing we are having to change, particularly uh, uh, we had the past, uh, um, well, really recently we did actually change the monitoring officer position. It is a very, very important uh, position. Uh, we talk about uh, scrutiny, as you quite rightly say, and obviously the monitoring officer is a very important part of that. Uh, but I have every confidence in the chief executive and his management team that the right decisions have been made and the right things are in place, and every confidence in terms of the uh, promotion of, uh, of the new monitoring officers. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mason. Thank you. I'd like to second uh, that motion and reserve the right to speak. Mr. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Mayor. Uh, we support the, rec the recommendation as laid out on page 47. Uh, we wish uh, Julian Crowell good luck and good fortune in his next appointment. We're sorry to see him go uh, in such a short time in particular, yes. We really didn't get to know uh, him, him very well. <coughs> we welcome uh, and congratulate uh, Sanjit Sol on her appointment um, and promotion to monitor an officer and hope she will be <coughs> have a successful, rewarding and long stay at Bruscliff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Robinson, do you wish to respond? Uh, no. Okay. We'll take the vote. All in favour? Unanimous. Okay. That is carried. Mm. Item 10 is notices of motion. Um, I do need to read this. Councillors are reminded that the local plan is to be considered for adoption by full council following the conclusion of the public inquiry and that any discussion on the motion this evening will be a matter of public record. Therefore, councillors should be mindful of the need to avoid any discussion that may give the appearance of bias or of having predetermined view before taking a decision on planning policy. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't normally, but I'm actually going to read this motion out to know it's in front of you, but I think it's really important that we are absolutely clear what this motion is trying to do. So, as it reads, despite building more houses, including social housing, within the Greater Nottingham housing area than any other district over the last seven years, Rushcliffe is being unfairly penalised under current government planning policy. The Council would like to express to the government in the strongest terms its frustrations in the delays of developers and landowners in progressing housing sites that have been allocated since December 2014 in our core strategy. This is having an unacceptable impact on the Council's five-year land supply, resulting in approvals being given on appeal on housing allocations that it does not support. The current housing land supply is 3.1 years due to a lack of delivery by landowners and developers on the major allocated housing sites. 
the soon to be adopted Local Plan 2 will provide Rushcliffe once again with five years of housing land supply. But this could quickly be put at risk, and again through continuing action by landowners and developers on the major allocated housing sites. So this council is calling for the government to step up support in both ensuring that developers and landowners progress to developments on these strategic sites and increasing the protection for areas outside the core city area by preventing speculative developments which are not allocated within the local plan or the emerging local plan part two. Now I make no apologies Madam Mayor for reading that out because I think the words are very very important. I don't think it's any surprise to this uh, to many members that we've actually brought this motion uh, to council tonight. As been mentioned this is not about the local plan too this is about fairness reasonableness of housing policy and the incredible negative impact this is having on this authority. Back in 2014 I was in the chamber then when we agreed the 13 and a half thousand houses for local plan one and even then we knew this was going to be an enormous challenge to deliver. But we had the allocated sites, the commitment, the focus to ensure that we would play our part in providing not just homes, but the affordable homes that Rushcliffe desperately needs. Four years on, a number of those large sites are just not being delivered. And I can absolutely categorically say there is very, very little more that this borough can do to get those sites moving forward. They've all got individual challenges, but the output of this is they are not delivering the houses to the rate that we need. And as the motion said, it's not just about development, it's also about the landowners, the investors, the people with the money as well, because they also play a very significant part. So let's not just hang the developers, it is also the investors, the speculators, who are owning this land. Now, anybody who has read the press recently about the, the, the total utter frustration, particularly in East Leak, where we are constantly losing appeals and just being told, yes, this will go ahead because you have not got your five-year land supply. There are companies now looking all over Rushcliffe to say, we can put developments forward, which this authority does not support. The communities don't support them. We haven't got the infrastructure, but the overriding thing is we have not got the supply to the five years. And as the motion said, we desperately need this government and any future government to give us the power, the tools to absolutely make sure the developers, the landowners bring forward these developments and deliver the homes. Because just remember, members, we do not build houses. Rushcliffe has never built a house. We give permissions. Yeah, it is the developers who actually build the houses. And this motion is very important in timing because the chief executive October. And that is why timely, if the council would like to the second time, would like to Again, in front of the Housing Minister, I need the strongest motion we can and the message to say it is absolutely not acceptable to my residents, to your residents, about what is happening at the moment. It cannot go on. So I ask all who support this motion to give us a tools, to give us a message, not just to the Housing Minister, but we gave it to our, uh, our MP on, on Monday. We'll be giving it to the, uh, the other MP very shortly as well. We want to give it to our residents, we want to give it to the developers, everybody, that it is not acceptable and that we do desperately need these tools that have been talked about in the past to make sure that these houses are delivered. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Pleased to second this. I stood here and made a statement at full council on the 26th of April this year about housing and I said several times that we need more housing and we need it now. There's been some progress with delivering more new homes but far more needs to be done as Councillor Robbins testified in our lack of a five-year housing land supply 
and they are continuing losing housing planning appeals and seeing development where neither the parish or the borough council wants it to be. As I said earlier in the year, and I say it again, housing is not an unreasonable wish, and our national housing shortage is perhaps one of the most pressing social issues uh, that we have as a society at the moment. Nationally, we need to build around 300,000 new homes a year, every year. And Rushcliffe, as you've heard, is tasked with building around 13,000 by 2028, which isn't that far away. Despite, in the last seven years, more housing, including social housing, um, having been built in the Rushcliffe uh, than in any other part of the Greater Nottingham housing market area, nevertheless, um, we feel we're being unfairly penalised uh, in our current planning policies. And I'd just like to repeat that. We have built more houses in the last seven years in the Greater Nottingham housing market area than any other in the county. As we've heard, no one can live in a planning permission. The Local Government Association believes that nationally there are planning permissions given for more than 423,000 houses in England and Wales. 423,000. But they're still waiting to be built. And on average, it now takes 40 months from getting the planning permission to completing the build. Eight months longer than it took in 2013-14. Why? I repeat what Councillor Robinson said because I think it's important and it's perhaps understood by, not, sorry, misunderstood by a lot of people. This council doesn't build homes. It gives the planning approvals, yes, but it doesn't build the homes. And so often I get people challenging me about that. Developers, in my opinion, need to get on and start delivering more. But as you've heard, we lack the effective tools to actually make it happen. And this is what this motion is all about, making it happen, namely asking the government to help us to find the means to ensure that landowners and developers progress the housing sites that we've allocated back in 2014 <laughs> in our core strategy and to increase the protection for the areas that are not allocated, as you hear, are being uh, developed by speculative landowners and, and developers because we, we haven't got that five-year land supply. I've probably said more than enough, but I would like to second this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McInnes. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> the issue of the pace of house building and growth is the biggest planning issue that confronts our borough. Madam Mayor, despite having a sound and up-to-date local, <coughs> local plan part one in place and a part two shortly to be approved by the inspectorate, and an effective and efficient planning and growth committee who have granted in Rushcliffe 7,575 homes over the past five years. Regrettably, out of that 7,575, only 3,027 have been developed. 4,547, or 60%, are still waiting to be built. Incredible number, that, all that over five years. Even with this level of support and effort, we still find ourselves in the extraordinary position of having to appeal to the government for help. The process of creating a local plan part two has taken longer than planned as we struggle to identify, the, identify a five-year supply of housing land without sacrificing valued green field and green belt land. Although it's anticipated that the local plan part two will be approved, there is concern that all this could be put at risk again if there is inaction by developers on strategic sites. Local authorities like ourselves can only make land available for housing and then rely on private developers to actually build the homes as re <coughs> at the required rate. If developers fail to deliver enough homes, it's the local authority the local authorities are required to address that shortfall by allocating even more land. Without a plan in place, local authority decisions to reject housing can be overturned by a planning expectorate uh, appeal. This loophole in the planning guidance, Madam Mayor, 
allows developers to bypass local democratic procedures and gain planning permissions at appeal. And East Leak and Aslockton are classic examples of this. Perversely, the situation has been exacerbated <coughs> as councils, like ourselves, who struggle to meet housing targets, are required by the National Planning Framework, that's the MPPF, just to practice that, to increase their five-year supply of land by 20% as a buffer to ensure choice and competition in the market for land. Furthermore, it's possible for dealers, uh, developers to get substantial permissions granted on one site in a given part of the borough to build out at a slow rate and to gain planning permission on appeal on another site it has acquired in the same district. A local authority like Rushcliffe, which is cooperating fully with the national policy aim of increasing house building, should not be undermined by grant of permission on appeal. <coughs> elsewhere, or elsewhere in its area outside of its local plan. The whole point of a local plan is to set a, a sustainable pace of building and to concentrate the development to make it easier to provide the schooling, health, play and other facilities of growing community needs. Madam Mayor, to address the potential difficulties, we should be urgently calling on the government to make the following changes to the national policy, <coughs> policy framework, MPPF. <clears throat> One, immediately suspend the requirement <clears throat> in the NPPF to allocate an additional 20% buffer of deliver deliverable housing sites when a five-year <clears throat> supply of land is not demonstratable. Amend the MPPF to ensure that where there's an up-to-date neighbourhood plan in place, development of inappropriate and allocated un and un unallocated sites should not be permitted. Amend the NPPF to allow for a flexible approach to five-year uh, housing supply in, <coughs> in local authorities that can, can't, can't demonstrate they are uh, uh, who can demonstrate they are promoting large-scale developments that will meet housing need in the future. <coughs> Finally, factor in the number of home permissions not built into the five-year supply of land calculation. We support the motion, Madam Mayor, and urge the leader to contact the Secretary of State to arrange a meeting as soon as it can be <coughs> organised so they, these issues can be discussed, addressed and resolved. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Davidson, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I support very largely what, uh, what Councillor McInnes has just said, and certainly my, I and my colleague will be supporting the resolution. I think it's absolutely bizarre that when we give permission and the houses are not built, that that is taken out of the land supply. It's bizarre, it's illogical. And I think that is one of the things, again, as Councillor McInnes was saying, that Councillor Robinson and the Chief Executive should be bending the ear very strongly of the authorities at Westminster to make sure that that particularly illogical situation does not continue. Uh, I suspect that one of the problems may well be that developers are hanging on to their land with the permissions because they think that house prices are going to continue going up. Well, they might have a shock. It doesn't necessarily follow that house prices are going to go up all the time. So, yes, I strongly support this. I think that the, 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 the strongest representations that can possibly be made should be made, and I think that I would wish Councillor Robinson and the Chief Executive, great success, without necessarily much hope. Uh, with great <laughs> I would hope that they would actually be able to make some progress because it, it is a very illogical situation, it is, as, as the leader has said, a very unfair situation, and I think it's a one that, that we are being uh, hammered with uh, quite unnecessarily, uh, where we are an, in a position to have, we have had all these planning permissions given, why on earth have 60% of them not been built four years later? As I say, the only thing I can think of is that they are hanging on on the grounds that they think house prices are going to continue going up and up and up. Well, 
That's not a good excuse as far as I'm concerned, and it's certainly not a good excuse as far as the communities in Russia are concerned, who are having to put up, as has been said several times, with forced allocations in places that are completely inappropriate in many cases. Uh, and I think that good luck to the leader and the chief executive in their endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Uh, Madam Mayor, the Liberal group, Liberal group, at least two of us, <clears throat> support this motion and the frustrations behind it. Rising land prices are one of the more influential contributors to our housing crisis. They mean fewer homes are built, they are less affordable, they are built more slowly, there are compromises on quality, and there is not enough funding left for infrastructure and services that residents need. There are huge gains for communities, economies and public services if councils were allowed to capture the potentially billions of pounds of land value increases to invest in infrastructure and services. That's not what I'm saying. That's what the local government lead on housing is saying. And I hope that that is put forward by, by the leader in these, in these discussions. Today, the announcement has been made that private house builders uh, have dropped even further in the construction numbers it constructed nationally. There is no use, I think, in calling on builders to build when they're, they're financially uh, driven by wanting to keep the house prices up, unless there are penalties. It is well known that the peak time for house building <coughs> was many decades ago when councils were unable to build to, be, to meet local need. The government should enable councils to borrow directly or through housing associations to build and sell and, and preferably to hire local builders to build locally. My last point is that councils should be able to compulsory purchase at undeveloped land prices if landowners and national builders are dragging their feet to keep house prices up. We totally support the motion. We just hope that the, the word support is refined and pushed with the Minister. And we wish you every good luck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Butler, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I had the job, I was going to say pleasure, but it wasn't really a pleasure at the time, of presenting the local plan part one nearly four years ago. And we were told at the time, you must have this local plan, in, otherwise decisions are going to be taken away from you uh, for where the houses are going to be built. So a team of members and officers, the LDF group, spent months preparing our local plan part one. We had a lot of pain. We had uh, comments from residents understandably unhappy about proposed sites, but we made those decisions. We were told we had to make, and the, and the council passed that uh, motion in, in December 2014. So I hate to say it, we breathed a, sl a slight sigh of relief at the time, or I did, for how wrong we were. Because here we are now, four years down the line, in the same boat, under threat. We're being seen as the bad guys, the council, the, the local authority, or you're, you're failing because you're not building or, or not allowing building. But we are. And as we've heard tonight, permissions are in place, but the de developers and landowners, for one reason or another, are not cooperating. So the point we need to get across, we did our bit, we did our part of the deal, it was painful at the time for us. We're going through local plan, or we've just been going through local plan part two at the moment, and that's been slightly less painful, but it's a big job. And cynics out there will, will start thinking, well, what's the point of it all? People responded to consultations, members did. We spent a, a huge amount of time uh, doing the local plan. In actual fact, it was a very interesting experience. It was hard work, but if ever you feel the, the, the views of the people out there and you feel as if you're playing your part of the councillor, it's when you're uh, preparing a local plan, because at the end of the day, everyone's got a view. Some will approve, some won't. But we made, and it's a very overused word, uh, a difficult decision, if you like. We're always being told we've got to do that, and we stood up to it. We did it, but now it's galling to find, and I hate to say it's my government, our government at the moment, but I would suspect any government, whoever is in place, will turn around to the local authorities, say, get yourself sorted out, or we will force housing on you if you don't have a local plan. But we've got a local plan, and we're, hopefully we'll have a local plan part two before we're a lot older. Who knows what, what will happen to that? But uh, So really, I do fully support the motion. I'm very pleased to hear that colleagues 
uh, across the chamber are supporting it as well. Uh, this is a very important matter. At the end of the day, it's the biggest thing this authority does and is responsible for. And especially, well, any, any planning authority, but especially this authority, given the, frankly, in my view, the, the big challenge of finding the 13,000 plus houses. That was another huge uh, uh, challenge we had. We were the only local authority, certainly in Nottinghamshire, that had to have the pain of allocating sites to so many houses and also the knock-on effects of infrastructure worries and all the rest of it. So here we are. Permissions are in place. Land is allocated. Come on, guys. Help us out. Build the houses and get on with it. And, and anything we can do to get the government actually on our side and also on people out there who want to buy houses. I mean, the, 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 the sites that have developed, delivered already are selling very well. In my part of the world, Cockgrave, the ones in Ed Walton, they're selling off plan. So the demand is there. Let's uh, uh, hopefully between us get the message across that we need to get the houses delivered. And we have done the best we can, and we will continue to do the best we can as the, the planning authority. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councillor S. Mullender. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we fully support everything that's been said by all parties. Um, in particular, I agree with uh, Councillor Jones in the idea of having some compuls compulsory purchase of land that has sat there and not been built on, uh, that's owned by developers, and actually building and selling or renting out um, houses that can be built there by this council. Uh, we would also like to see the government backing up this and other councils in terms of, of what is asked of developers. So, for instance, when we ask of developers that there should be a certain percentage of affordable homes or homes for social rent, they don't go to the government and say, oh, I'm sorry, we can't do that because it's not financially viable. But the government has to back us up and say, no, we need social housing, we need affordable housing, and you should build it. No excuses. Um, we also need the, the government to back us up in terms of the other facilities and the infrastructure that is provided on housing sites. So we need to be able to say that the new development is going to be a pleasant place in which to live. So we need those green spaces that we ask for. We need recreational spaces, education, health facilities, public transport, cycling and walking, places for wildlife. So again, we need to be able to say that the government needs to back us up so that those kind of things aren't missed out by those developers on some sort of excuse. We, as I say, we fully agree with this motion. The only thing is we'd like to see it made a bit stronger, really. Um, where it says this council is calling for government to step up its support. What support? I would prefer it to say, we would prefer it to say, the council is calling for government to, number one, ensure that developers and landowners progress the developments on these strategic sites and increase the protection for areas because there's very little support at the moment. Thank you. Councillor Khan. M Madam Mayor, I also fully support the motion presented by the leader. I also fully understand his frustration. I also support that he's seeking powers. And I hope what that means is some tangible action against those developers and landowners who deliberately, who are deliberately delaying housing development. And I hope that will result in uh, financial penalties, perhaps. I hope that will result in compulsory purchase of land who delay development. And I hope that there could be some financial penalties. But I know he's wise, our leader, and will make the right decision when the powers are given. The other point I wish to make, Madam Mayor, is this, that sometimes excuses are presented. But let me just, uh, uh, let me just say that emphatically, that planning process is efficient, and it has never been an excuse for development. Nine out of ten uh, planning applications are, are, are granted. So that can't be the reason. 
and more importantly, all major political parties are united on this issue. So I reiterate that I support the motion. I also support this powers he's seeking to deal with the problem. Thank you. Councillor Robertson, you wish to respond? Thank you. Madam Mayor, I, I would like to thank all the, uh, the speakers and the parties for their uh, support and uh, obviously an awful lot was, uh, was said there, particularly I think everyone's got an opinion of how you facilitate delivering more houses, which wasn't actually the purpose of the motion. It's about increasing that pressure on the government to actually do something about it. Um, ultimately, for me, it's about quality of life because the outset of this, so the outcomes of this, is that houses have been built where they should not be built. And that affects quality of life. It affects the quality of the services, infrastructure, etc. And for me, that is probably the most important thing. That's how we're being penalised. Houses being built right now and in the future we have been won on appeal that should not be there. And so the legacy of all of us will be housing that should not be there. And that fills me with a lot of anger and disappointment. I don't care who the government is, what colour they are. It's about Rushcliffe, it's about today. And it's really doing everything we can. And uh, as I say, the uh, Chief Executive and myself, we met with, the, uh, with, with Ken Clark. He has committed to speak with uh, the uh, Secretary of State. And he actually gets the message, Mr. Clark. He, he absolutely understands that Rushcliffe in particular is suffering under this policy. He also acknowledges and will take back the fact we have delivered more houses, more social houses than any other district in the whole of uh, Nottinghamshire. And as I said, when we meet that housing minister, we have to get outcomes. It's no good and hopefully you know me well enough, I don't want to waste my time at Westminster talking to someone who's not particularly interested. He has got to make sure there is action out of it. And it won't just be the one meeting, we've got to do follow-up and we've got to really, really turn the pressure on either by the press, by other MPs, uh, to make sure that people understand this very, very unique issue. And I would like to pay a big tribute to the officers uh, here at Rushcliffe because I see it day to day of their frustrations because they actually get it a lot more than we do from residents. You know, they're accused of things, say, all sorts of things. But believe you me, they are working very hard. The calls that are being made, the meetings being had, but ultimately that is where the issue breaks down because they cannot do anything about it. When a developer, a landowner says, no, no, I'm waiting. And let me also add, unfortunately, there are other issues at play here. Brexit. Everyone saw the Bank of England, uh, Mr. Mark Carney, what he said last week. House prices are going to fall by 32%. So if you're a land investor in Rushcliffe, what are you going to do? Are you going to build a house now? No. Let's wait. Let's wait maybe even more, even longer. Because there aren't any penalties. Just carry on and carry on. So there are even messages going out like this. Why is it like to say that? I have absolutely no idea. And the impact that, is, that will have. Because just remember, I know you've talked a lot about development. A lot of it is landowners as well. Let me also add that these major sites are very complex. It's not sometimes just about affordability. It's about the lack of cooperation with, from our even public sector partners is having a negative effect as well. It's also about uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the real lack of coordination with landowners having one voice. It's, it's like many landowners all having different agendas, all having different opinions. And that just makes it so hard for us to coordinate. Can also just lastly add, uh, Madam Mayor, we should acknowledge there has been major successes, and I, I, I thank uh, Councillor Butler. Personally, it's in my ward and <coughs> Councillor Beersall. We've seen Sharp Hill, incredibly complex site, is now delivering an incredible rate, and is making a huge contribution to those numbers and the social housing as well, as is as is Cockgrave, and they were very difficult nuts to crack, but they actually got there because there was a will, there was a coordination, and there was fantastic commitment by members here through planning, through the LDF, etc., to make sure they happen. So we should actually acknowledge that as well. But I do thank you, and lastly, just to say, I do thank you for your support, and I think the Chief Executive as well, it rings in his ears as well, that we desperately, desperately need help here at Rushcliffe, and we will take that message very strongly back to the people that matter.
Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the vote now. All those in favour of the motion. Motion is carried. Item 11 is questions understanding order number 11 brackets 2. Uh, Councillor R. Mallander, yours is the first question. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to start by also saying that thank you to Councillor Combalak um, for sorting out the uh, visit to the materials recovery facility that uh, several of us went on uh, a while ago. Uh, this question was... Uh, Hey, sorry, was it somebody else? Well, there's a question, that was all. Oh, oh, there's a question, yeah. <laughs> Ke careful, I'm tempted to do a supplementary about Lycra, what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, following Councillor's recent visit to the materials recovery at Mansfield, it did become clear that current guidelines on the type and nature of materials, that, oh, sorry, that the, the, the current guidelines issued to residents are insufficient to provide clear direction on the type and nature of materials that can be recycled. Will the councillor undertake to improve and clarify the information Rushcliffe Borough Council provides to residents such that our recycling rates can be substantially improved? To Councillor Upton to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm sure many of us get complaints from the public that they're confused about what to put in uh, which bin. Indeed, I often have to stop and think what can go in my blue recycling bin. I can, however, assure you that this council is very much aware of the problem and we are currently working with the county council and other district councils and indeed Veolia, uh, who are the contractor um, with the contract to dispose of the waste in the county, to try and improve the recycling guidelines for the public to try and end this confusion. But I have to say it's not helped by the existing waste input specification at Veolia's Mansfield recycling uh, facility. As you probably know, Rushcliffe is just the waste collection uh, authority, whilst the county council is the waste disposal authority that manages the waste specifications through its 26-year PFI contract with Veolia, which I'm told doesn't end until 2032. On a more positive note, this council remains the top district for recycling in Nottinghamshire with over 50% and we are introducing Tetra Pak recycling bins at some sites and dual purpose litter bins. We're not complacent, we're doing our best, but it is a complicated uh, contractual business between us, the county council and the Veolia contractor. Work in progress. Thank you. Councillor Mallander, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Madam Mayor. Yes, I, yes, I do. Um, I think that you've pretty much anticipated what a lot of it might be. However, um, given that the County Council has bought into this agreement with Veolia and we are there until 2032 with this current specification, uh, will Council Upson undertake to work with uh, other brothers and districts put pressure on the County Council to either revise the specification such that a wider range of materials can be uh, recycled or to seek with the other districts an alternative arrangements for the wider recycling of other materials. Thank you, Councillor Upton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, understand the question. The work is in hand. In fact, the letter went this week to the County Council on that very point that you make. Thank you. Question number two this evening is um, Councillor S. Mullinder, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this again is to uh, Councillor Upton. Um, will the Councillor please update Council on the progress made to date on reducing single-use plastic within the Borough Council and by our partner organisations? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think I ought to remain standing for the next few questions, and I really think it will be coming my way this evening. Um, I think we're all very much aware of the current public interest in the uh, issue of uh, single-use plastics and the effect it's having globally with Blue Planet and the other um, media interest in it. Uh, indeed, this council and its partners have made a good start in reducing the use of uh, single plastics at our sites, and we're encouraging parish and town councils to follow our lead and businesses 
And indeed, at last week's uh, town and parish council meeting in this room that I attended, uh, a, a, um, a very excellent uh, presentation from Radcliffe-on-Trent Parish Council uh, on, on the excellent start that they've made to tackle uh, this problem in, in their area, and hopefully it will uh, be taken up across, across the uh, district and further afield. We're not complacent. There's, there's a lot more that we can and, and we will do. Uh, there was a report and action plan from our single plastic working group and our community development scrutiny group uh, on the 18th of this month. And I'd urge you to read this if you've not already done so. Thank you. Do I have a supplementary question? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, well, thank you for that. I have I, uh, did actually attend the uh, Town and Parish Forum, and uh, there was certainly a lot of uh, very impressive efforts from Radcliffe on Trent Parish Council. Um, however, I th uh, just make some suggestions, really, that could we, could we please have a look at the uh, refill app? Because I realise there's this refill Rushcliffe scheme, but I have the refill app on my mobile phone, and it still only has Costa, the Trent Bridge Inn, Bread and Butterflies in Lady Bay, and a new place called, um, I think it's Avenue or A Venue or something like that. Um, so, you know, that is something that we could perhaps suggest to local businesses as well as just uh, partners in terms of, uh, of parish, parish and town councils. And also uh, having a look at confetti that is made of plastic being banned yeah. from sites as well, please. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. The question is, could we look into those, you know, um, uh, into non-biodegradable confetti and okay. looking at the, the apps that are available, please. Yes. Councillor Upton. Thank you, Ms. Madam Mayor. To reply to the main question, please. Supplementary. I, I think the, the short answer is yes, understand the points, the two points, key points you make. We are looking into it, so it, it's a yes. Understand what you say. Thank you. Uh, Councillor S. Malinder, to ask the next oh. question, please. <laughs> I think I might as well stand up as well. Um, in view of the need to increase recycling rates within the borough, will the councillor commit to seeking new locations for bring sites for glass recycling? Mr. Upton. <laughs> well, waste is certainly a popular subject this evening, isn't it? And uh, as I've said previously, I don't think we're doing too bad. We're the highest recycling rate in the county at over 50%, but we do strive to increase this. So, yes, absolutely get it about increasing glass recycling rates. Um, <clears throat> we're always willing to look at, at suggested new sites, but they have to be in appropriate, sorry, in appropriate and sustainable locations. Um, and it's not always easy because you have, understandably, residents' concerns about noise and traffic and, and, and the like. But um, as, you, as you may be aware, the council is currently evaluating, evaluating getting tongue twice, tongue twisted tonight. The council, we're certainly evaluating a site at the Hook Car Park, which I think is very close to your um, ward or in your ward. Uh, and to be clear, the council is committed to seeking new glass recycling sites wherever reasonably appropriate. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary question? Thank you. <coughs> um, the next question is by uh, Councillor Hull, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In view of what was learnt at the uh, MRF, now famous visit to MRF, will the Council make representations to the Government to bring about legislation requiring manufacturers to simplify the number of types of food packaging that is currently recyclable. That's right. And again, yes. Well, from my own experience, I believe there's been uh, some progress with this, but more should be done. Uh, in March this year, the council coordinated a combined response from the Nottinghamshire Joint Management Waste Committee, a bit of a mouthful there, which I actually sit on. And uh, we, we coordinated a response to the governance consultation on tackling the plastic problem. This included specific questions regarding the opportunity for manufacturers to do more to reduce and simplify current food packaging arrangements. And I'd like to thank our officers for their interest and professional advice that they are giving to government as I speak on this issue. This council is also a member, and I'm sorry to put these 
the, these bodies a uh, mouthful. Local Authority Recycling Advisory Committee and the Recycling of Used Plastics Group. These are national organisations, is why I mention them, because we do have a voice nationally on the very um, concern you're expressing about um, plastics and foods, food, food trays and the like. So we, we, have, we have influence on government uh, as I speak. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Hull? Thank you, Madam Mayor. As, if, as it appears, MRF is not able to change and recycle more types of plastic food packaging waste before the end of their contract, as we've learned, and as our Russia Borough Council is a customer of MRF, will the Cabinet have a say in the County Council's decision-making process at the end of the contract? Councillor Thank you, Madam um, I just picked up on your last comment. At the end of the contract, I, I think we would like some uh, influence way before, before um, 2032. Um, as I said in the answer to a previous question, we have written to the County Council this week and we are asking to be involved on that very issue. I, I, would, I would not say it can't be changed before, before 3032, never say never. Uh, the, the issue is now, the time is now, and, and we're on the case now and we're looking for a, a discussion a robust discussion with, with the County Council on that contract that they have and incidentally it was put in place by the Labour Administration at County Hall and so, you know, uh, we're going to try and look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Councillor Edwards, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This one isn't for Councillor Upton, so he can <laughs> have a rest now. Uh, my question go. is to <laughs> Councillor Mason. It's now three years since Council approved that the proceeds of the sale of the art collection be used for art in the borough, and more than two years since Cabinet approved the sum of £25,000 for a sculptured seat outside the arena. Why is it taking so long for this work to be completed? Councillor Mason. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the agreement that the proceeds of the Borough Art Collection could be used to commission a sculpture outside the new Rushcliffe Arena was discussed at the Community Development Group, but that was uh, two years ago. Options to create a, a bespoke seating sculpture have been considered, however. We had the initial one um, that looked like a flower, um, and when the details designs was received, it was considered that actually the design was not appropriate for the proposed location. The initial design was of a flower. The following design that they would be able to actually produce for the money was not like that. It was um, very angular with sharp edges and was considered not to be suitable under uh, safety issues. I acknowledge that this has taken some time, uh, but I... I emphasise that it's more important that we get it right rather than spend the money I, I, in haste. I know it has taken a long time though. And public art can be very dis divisive. So I've also had people coming to say that they didn't like it, that they did, and I, I have done some consultation amongst members. Um, so I, I believe that um, something else needs to happen. Maybe not a seat, but something else. Um, and uh, we will be looking at that. And it could possibly go back to CCG, CDG to actually discuss it. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Do you have a supplementary question? I'm almost speechless, uh, Chair, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, could. Could Councillor Mason give us some time scale on this? Because this has now been two years going backwards and forwards. Um, you, you know, it, it, it isn't the, the greatest difficult thing in the world to be able to uh, spend £25,000 on a piece of sculpture question, outside our please. arena. Could she tell us when, uh, this is, when this is likely to happen? When is she going to be able to make it happen? Thank you, Councillor Mason. I have no timescales at the moment, um, and I believe that it should go back to the Community Development Group to perhaps look at something else um, that could happen, say, 
within the arena maybe and involve young people. Thank you. I believe you have the next question, Councillor Edwards. Thank, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. My, uh, the last question on the evening is to Councillor Robinson. Uh, in considering the County Council's plans for the creation of a unitary council or councils, what are the leaders' quote red lines to protect Rushcliffe residents and services? Councillor Robinson, sorry. sorry. Thank you, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just um, be absolutely clear on this: is that you, you, you've asked for the leaders' opinions here? Just to be clear in terms of the the actual council, Rushcliffe Borough Council does not have any red lines because those red lines would have to come to uh, to full council and. As you're aware, there is a business plan being done there, and so uh, officially uh, there, there is no red lines. Uh, the government have certain guidelines in terms of unitary proposals, in terms of uh, local support, etc. And although you could view those as, as red lines, as you said in the question, there, Councillor, the, the leaders, and this, I say the leaders, that is my own personal view. There are a number of red lines for me. I think first and foremost is that would not, as a consequence, want to see West Bridgeford move out of Rushcliffe. You're obviously aware of uh, the intentions of the city, that the unit should be granted, that uh, they would take over West Bridgeford. I wouldn't like to see any substantial tax hike. Uh, there would be an equalisation policy. Uh, we enjoy the lowest council tax anywhere in the county. Uh, Ashfield, I think I've got the most expensive one, so equalisation. We certainly wouldn't want to see a substantial tax hike for residents and businesses. Uh, well, sorry, uh, it is for residents because that's business tax. For residents in the, uh, in, in, in the borough. I wouldn't like to see any substantial deterioration of services to our residents. We're very proud of what we do at Rushcliffe, of every facet of what we do. And this is quite subjective. And, of course, you wouldn't be able to judge this until the unit is actually... Uh, goes ahead but certainly it's something that personally I would declare very very openly that we must not see a substantial deterioration in services and lastly I a red light for me personally is that Rushcliffe both through political and through officer level must be engaged in the preparation of the business plan and the outcomes of it thank you thank you Councillor Edwards do you have a supplementary question uh, thank you Madam Mayor uh, is it not the case, Madam Mayor, that the County Council wants to get its hands on Rushcliffe's financial resources and to bail it out, and this is not in the interests of Rushcliffe's residents? I say, Madam Mayor, I think that's probably a question that you need to put to the leader of the County Council, not the leader of Rushcliffe. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That was the last question, but before you leave this evening, could you please complete the paper asking for where you would be willing to lay a wreath for Remembrance Day um, before you leave this evening and um, hand it to an officer, or please. Uh, that concludes the business for this evening. Thank you very much for attending.